Hi there, my name is Dr. Stewart, and today we're going to talk about the muscles of the arm. And we're really going to focus on the upper arm first. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to draw out these muscles using this little iPad, because uh, that allows us to kind of see how the different muscles lie on top of each other. It's really hard to do this with normal paper and pen or, or paint, because the muscles are very much um, organized in layers, right? So this allows us to kind of build things up. Now first we'll kind of look at, um, this is the anterior view of a skeleton, right? This is just an illustration of a skeleton and we're going to focus on the muscles of the right arm. Now the, we're going to focus first on these deep muscles because those are the ones that are covered up by the most superficial ones. First muscle that I like to talk about is called the pectoralis minor. This is um, a series of three muscles that help to pull or protract the shoulder blade anterior or forward. And so the pectoralis minor is going to have three sites of origin. It's going to originate along the um, third, fourth, and fifth ribs. And its insertion is going to be right here at the coracoid process of the scapula, the little bump that extends uh, forward. So you're going to have these three muscles that kind of extend out like that. Right? Draw one more. And these guys are going to help to pull that shoulder blade forward. We're going to color this guy in in yellow. So all of these muscles are going to be yellow in color. And I'm going to come over here and wear a little color code. This is going to be the pectoralis minor. Okay. And so we can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to add some little marks to indicate which way the muscle fibers are running, right? So the muscle fibers kind of run like that. And this uh, muscle is really going to help to pull that shoulder blade forward. Now another muscle that's very deep about on the same level, which is worth uh, talking about now, is the coracobrachialis. Uh, and with a name like that, it's perfect name to describe its location. Corico, so it extends from the coracoid process of the scapula, that's its origin, brachialis to the humerus or the brachial region. So this guy is going to also, his origin is going to be the coracoid process and his um, insertion is going to be right here about halfway down um, the, the humerus. And he's going to be shaped just about like that. Right, so that's your coracobrachialis. Let's make him a different color. Let's make him more of like a, um, like an orange. How about that? So right there, we're gonna, and he's gonna be called the coracobrachialis. All right, perfect. And his job is going to be um, to pull or to flex the humerus kind of um, forward or anterior like this. And he also works to kind of um, adduct the arm or pull it up to the body. He's obviously not that strong because he's a smaller muscle. Um, but his kind of fiber directions are going to be kind of running like this. And that is your coracobrachialis. Another muscle that would be good to talk about is the brachialis because he's also quite deep. I'm going to make another layer because he does sit a little bit on top of the first ones that we've talked about. So um, the brachialis is going to be a muscle that flexes the arm. His origin is going to be right here at the deltoid tuberosity, which is that little bump along the end, along the lateral side of the of the of the humerus, and his insertion is going to be right here at the proximal end of the ulna. Remember the ulna is the bone that lies more medial, whereas the radius of the, uh, in the forearm is more lateral. And this is a really strong uh, muscle that kind of um, extends out like this. Let me try that again. He's gonna extend out like this, and then like this. And he's a very powerful um, elbow flexor because he extends from the arm to the ulna and he's really going to help to flex that arm. Let me make him more of a purple color and that is going to be called the brachialis. And his fiber angles are kind of going to run like this. They kind of wrap around the arm to some degree. So I'm going to kind of try to illustrate that. I don't know if that comes out or not. But it kind of wraps around the arm. Kind of like that. All right. Very powerful um, elbow flexor. 
Now would be a good time to kind of talk about the biceps muscle. So the biceps muscle is um, probably our most prominent kind of um, elbow flexor. It's the large meaty muscle right here. And um, this guy, biceps, he's going to have two heads or two origin sites. And I'm going to draw him as a new layer that lies on top of all these other muscles because he is more superficial. And um, this guy, what he does is he's going to have two origins. The first origin is of the short head of the biceps muscle. And that's going to be right here at the coracoid process, the same kind of attachment site of the pectoralis minor and the coracobrachialis. The second attachment site is going to be right here. Let me tell you what, let me kind of get these other, okay, so now we can see it better. I've erased those other muscles. So the first attachment site of the uh, short head of the biceps muscle is going to be right here at the coracoid process. The second attachment site is going to be right here at the very top of the glenoid cavity. Now the insertion is going to be right here at the radial tuberosity, which is that little bulge at the proximal end of the radius. Now for the short head of the biceps muscle, he's going to go from the coracoid process and he's going to extend down like that and he's going to... Let me try that again. Start right here, and he's going to extend, uh, extend down like that. Okay, and then for the long head of the biceps muscle, this tendon is going to start here at the top of the glenoid cavity. He's going to wrap over the head of the humerus. He's going to go into the intertubercular sulcus right there, which lies between the greater and the lesser tubercles. Here's the greater tubercle, lesser tubercle. Then he's gonna expand out and join up with the other head of the biceps to form the complete muscle. So he kinda comes down here and then wraps around like that. Okay, and that's kinda what he looks like. Two heads. Short head, long head, the insertion right there at the radius. Now let's give him a color. How about this blue color? That'll be our biceps. Okay. And we'll label him right here. Biceps. Now let's give him some fiber angles so we can see exactly which direction these fibers are going. They kind of stretch up like this. Right. Perfect. Now, if we go back to our other layers of muscles, you'll see that the biceps really sits on top of the coracobrachialis and the um, brachialis. You really can't see those because the bicep really covers them up, right? Now, the next muscle that we should talk about is going to be the uh, deltoid muscle. Yeah, we can go ahead and talk about the deltoid. So the deltoid muscle is your, your shoulder muscle, and what this does is this is really going to help us like elevate the arm or um, abduct the arm like this. I'm going to give him another layer because he really sits on top of everybody else. Now, the deltoid muscle is going to have a very broad um, origin. He's going to have an origin that extends from about the distal half of the clavicle kind of extends out like here and then it also kind of wraps around and I'm going to do this kind of as a dotted line and his origin extends all along the spine of the scapula in the back. Can't really see that from this angle. But what this deltoid does is that he's going to stretch from this very broad origin and he's going to insert right here at the deltoid tuberosity which is the exact same place where the brachialis originated. So he's going to insert right about there. Boom. If we go back here, yeah, he's going to insert right about there. So let me get the bicep back up in view. So if we were to draw out this muscle, he extends from here onto there and then like that. And that is the deltoid. Let's color him in in a different color. How about a green? We haven't used green yet. All right. And so you'll notice that the deltoid really covers a lot of those muscles that we've already drawn. Let's give him some fibers so we can see exactly kind of which direction they're going. They exist in a couple of different you know, groups that wrap around like this. 
Not perfect, but good enough. And so you can really see that that muscle, when it contracts, is going to elevate the arm and cause abduction like that. Oh, let me um, label him. So this is the deltoid. Great. Now we can kind of fill in the um, pectoralis major. So the pectoralis major is also a very broad um, muscle. I'm going to draw him in a layer that is underneath the deltoid but above the biceps and i'm gonna erase actually i'm gonna that's all right let me i just want to be careful here so his origin is going to stretch from right where the deltoid stops oops wrong color and he's gonna extend down the sternum and he's even going to stretch along the intercostal cartilage right about here. Now I'm going to erase the deltoid so we can see exactly where this muscle goes. Because his insertion is going to be right here underneath the lesser tubercle of the humerus, kind of in that intertubercular sulcus. And this pectoralis major muscle is really going to extend out like that and then like this. And let's color him in, in uh, how about this light blue color that we haven't used yet. So that is gonna be our pectoralis major muscle. All right, let's give him some fiber angles. So you're gonna have all these fibers that are kind of stretching to the insertion site right there underneath the arm. And it kind of looks like this. Now the main job of that pectoralis major muscle is going to be to flex the humerus anterior like this. He works synergistically or in the same um, kind of fashion as the coracobrachialis muscle. Let's go show the deltoid again, you'll see how the pectoralis major muscle kind of um, goes underneath the deltoid. They're going to share a lot of the same kind of muscle fibers or the same direction of muscle fibers. I should have kind of drawn that better, but that's all right. You guys kind of get the idea. Okay. So those are the major muscles of the upper arm. The last one that I'm going to mention is actually of the forearm, but it's the major largest muscle of the forearm. The, no, no, excuse me. Brachioradialis. His origin is going to be right there right above the lateral condyle of the humerus. And he's going to wrap around and he's going to insert right here at the distal end of the radius. He does not span the wrist. So this brachioradialis is going to start here. He's going to be a, quite a large muscle that starts here and then wraps around to that location. And let me color him in, and how about this like pale yellowish green color? Perfect. And that is called the brachio radialis. Okay. His fiber angles are going to run like this. Oops. All right. Now, if we go back to the biceps, if I make the biceps visible again, you'll notice that this doesn't really make sense, you know? That's because this brachioradialis kind of wraps around the biceps to insert behind it. So to make this kind of look a little bit better, I'm going to take the eraser and lightly erase. Oops. Lightly erase the... muscle right there. Perfect. So you can kind of see him wrapping around. All right. Now the function of that brachioradialis, that is actually his job is to stabilize the muscle when you are um, doing a very strong flexion. Like if you're doing a pull up and you're really pulling yourself up, the brachioradialis, his job is to stabilize the arm joint and the elbow joint so you can do that, um, that exercise. All right.
Perfect. Well, that is about it for the upper arm. And if we kind of step through these different layers, let's step through from the deepest layers to the more superficial. If we start with the deepest layer, that's where we have the pectoralis minor and the coracobrachialis. Right, you can see the pectoralis minor and the coracobrachialis. On top of that, that's where you'll find the brachialis, right, the major flexor of the arm. On top of that, that's where we'll find the biceps brachii, which covers up most of all the muscles that we've talked about so far. Then we're gonna have the pectoralis major and the brachioradialis down here in the forearm. Finally, we can show the deltoid, which covers most of the shoulder. All right, okay, that'll do it for now. Thanks.